first piece of equipment we will review is the three compartment sink. Before using the sink, you will need to properly clean and fill it. To clean the sink, you will wipe down all the counters and insides of the sinks with a cloth, removing any physical debris. Then spray all surfaces with a sanitizing bottle. Allow the sanitizer to sit on the surface for at least 30 seconds. When it comes time to fill up the sinks, make sure the drain of each sink is closed. You can do this by grabbing the knob that is below the sink and pointing right when the drain is open and turning it until it points left, as shown in the picture. To fill the first sink, place the faucet over the detergent container and then turn on the water. The water temperature should be approximately 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Leave the faucet over the detergent until the sink is about one-fourth of the way full. Then, turn the faucet so it is no longer over the detergent container and continue to fill the sink until you have reached the water line. To fill the second sink, also known as the rinse sink, all you have to do is add clean, hot water until it reaches the water line. Finally, the third sink, or the sanitizing sink, is filled with warm water and sanitizer similarly to how the first sink was filled. The water of the sanitizing sink should be warm to ensure the sanitizer works correctly. It should not be too hot or too cold. The water in the sanitizing sink needs to be tested with a test strip. The test strip should be green and indicate 200 parts per million. You may need to adjust the concentration of the sanitizer in the sink depending on how the test strip is reading. When it finally comes time to use the three compartment sink, first scrape items into the trash can. Then use the hose to spray off any hardened materials. They can go down the disposal. There are two disposals in the dishwashing area. One at the beginning of the three compartment sink and the other is in front of the dish machine, which we will see later. After spraying items off, wash the item in the first sink. You may need to use a brush or a scrub pad to loosen debris. The water in the sink should be changed when the suds are gone or the water is too dirty. After the item is washed in the first sink, it will be rinsed in the second sink. The second sink should be changed when the water becomes dirty or full of suds. After rinsing the item in the second sink, the item will need to be sanitized in the third sink for at least 30 seconds. There is a clock located above the three compartment sink that you can use to time the sanitizing process. The water in the third sink should be changed when the temperature or sanitizing concentration falls below requirements. Finally, when items have been cleaned using the three compartment sink, they can be air dried on a clean and sanitized surface. In this case, that is the clean corner found at the end of the three compartment sink. Make sure to never towel dry items as you could contaminate them. Large pots, baking sheets, and knives are the most common items that will need to be run through the three compartment sink. The next piece of equipment we will review is the dish machine and disposal. Again, this needs to be cleaned and sanitized the same way as the three compartment sink before using it. Before turning on the dish machine, ensure the pieces inside of the machine are clean. If they are not, they can be placed on a flat rack and run through the machine. To turn on the machine, make sure it is in the closed position as seen in this video. Items that need to be run through the dish machine will be placed on the dirty side of the dish receiving counter. Utensils and towels will be placed to soak in bins that are located on the counter as seen here. Before dishes are loaded onto a dish rack to go through the dish machine, they will need to be sprayed off. You can do this using the hose. Debris that comes off the dishes can go down the disposal. If debris flies somewhere other than the disposal, it can be wiped back with the squeegee that is hanging behind the hose. When using the disposal, make sure the cover is on. If the cover is not on, debris will fly back up at you. To use the disposal, you first hit the forward button. Allow it to run for a few seconds. Then hit the stop button. Next, hit the reverse button and allow it to run for a few more seconds before hitting stop. Make sure you hit stop in between the forward and reverse action of the disposal. You will want to run the disposal periodically to prevent buildup. When it comes time to load the dish racks, never overload them and try to use the correct dish racks for each item. The dish racks with the pegs are best for loading plates and bowls, while the large grated racks are best for large mixing bowls and other large kitchen items. The light blue racks with the deeper pockets are best for glasses and mugs, while the small flat grated racks are best for utensils to ensure they do not fall through the holes. Utensils need to be run through the dish machine twice, once lying flat on a grated crate and the second time facing up in a utensil caddy. As you are using the dish machine, water temps need to be monitored. The temperature must reach 150 degrees Fahrenheit during the wash and then 180 degrees Fahrenheit in the final 15 seconds. When items come out of the dish machine, they need to be pulled out with a clean hand into the clean corner. 
If the clean corner becomes too crowded, racks can be moved onto the large dish drying rack located in front of the dish machine, as shown in this picture. The last thing we will view is the housekeeping alcove, mop sink, and chemical dispensers. It is important to note that the housekeeping alcove exists because cleaning tools and chemicals must be stored away from food and prep areas. In the alcove, you will find brooms, scrub brushes, trash bags, dish gloves, sanitizers, and green buckets. Green buckets and sanitizer bottles are set up at the beginning of lab and placed in various places around the room. In the housekeeping alcove, you can also find mops, mop heads, mop buckets, and a mop sink. Mops should only be washed in the mop sink and no other sink in the lab. The green button on the chemical dispenser can be used to fill up the mop buckets at the end of lab, and the red button on the chemical dispenser can use, be used to fill up the sanitizer bottles.